Good morning and welcome to Good Friday at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Coldwater. You are welcomed here. You are loved here. Today's worship service will follow the 14 stations of the cross. This is an ancient tradition that follows Jesus as he makes his way to his crucifixion and his death. We'll be singing, we'll be praying together, we'll be hearing about how Jesus worked his way from his trial to the cross. Thank you for being here. I pray that this time together is a blessing. Our prayers are responsive. My part is the light part. Your part is the bold italicized print. Step by step, day by day, Jesus moved in the light of truth toward the cross, a place of pain and possibility. Step by step, day by day, we move in the shadow of the cross toward a place of repentance and hope. As we gather with the sin-darkened memory of our part in Jesus' journey, we remember as well the glorious light of his forgiveness praying that we might know that gift once more. Station 1, Jesus Prays, Luke 22, 39 to 46. Leaving there, he went, as he so often did, to Mount Olives. The disciples followed him. When they arrived at the place, he said, Pray that you don't give in to temptation. He pulled away from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, remove this cup from me. But please, not what I want. What do you want? At once, an angel from heaven was at his side, strengthening him. He prayed on all the harder. Sweat, wrung from him like drops of blood, poured off his face. He got up from prayer, went back to the disciples, and found them asleep, drugged by grief. He said, What business do you have sleeping? Get up! Pray so you won't give in to temptation. Gracious God, with sleep-heavy eyes, the disciples kept an imperfect vigil. As Jesus prayed, they worried about their master's fate and feared the threats of the religious leaders. Confused, they did not understand what was happening or what their fate would be. Disciple-like, we fall asleep, exhausted by the burdens we carry. 
Beyond the safety of our prayers, we succumb to temptation or fall asleep while on duty. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. When he came back the next time, he said, Are you going to sleep on and make a night of it? My time is up. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's get going. My betrayer is here. The words were barely out of his mouth when Judas, the one from the Twelve, showed up and with him a gang from the high priests and religious leaders, brandishing swords and clubs. The betrayer had worked out a sign with them. The one I kiss. That's the one. Seize him. He went straight to Jesus, greeted him. How are you, Rabbi? And kissed him. Merciful God, Judas knew exactly what he was doing. His silver reward served the God of his personal desires. He chose the stuff of earth rather than heaven's sun. At times, Judas, like we betray you, rather than loving and serving you, we sell our souls for a penny. Rather than choose the freedom born of service, we bind ourselves with sin-forged chains. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ I live. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is condemned. The book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 56, chapter 6, verses 1 to 64. The high priest conspiring with the Jewish council looked high and low for evidence against Jesus by which they could sentence him to death. They found nothing. Plenty of people were willing to bring in false charges, but nothing added up, and they ended up canceling each other out. Then a few of them stood up and lied. We heard him say, I am going to tear down this temple 
built by hard labor and in three days build another without lifting a hand. But even they couldn't agree exactly. In the middle of this, the chief priest stood up and asked Jesus, What do you have to say to this accusation? Jesus was silent. He said nothing. The chief priest tried again, this time asking, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, Yes, I am, and you'll see it yourself. The Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Mighty One, arriving on the clouds of heaven. The chief priest lost his temper, ripping his clothes. He yelled, Did you hear that? After that, do we need witnesses? You heard the blasphemy. Are you going to stand for it? They condemned him, one and all. The sentence, death. Lord, with eyes wide open, we see creation's proclamation of your goodness, truth, power, majesty. Yet what we observe is not your glory, but only things to possess, people to fear, power to use for our own advantage. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Fourth Station Jesus is denied Luke twenty two fifty four to sixty two Arresting Jesus, they marched him off and took him into the house of the chief priest. Peter followed, but at a safe distance. In the middle of the courtyard some people had started a fire and were sitting around it, trying to keep warm. One of the serving maids sitting at the fire noticed him, and then took a second look and said, This man was with him. He denied it. Woman, I don't even know him. A short time later, someone else noticed him and said, You're one of them. But Peter denied it. Man, I am not. About an hour later, someone else spoke up, really adamant. He's got to have been with him. He's got Galilean written all over him. Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. At their, that very moment, the last word hardly off his lips, a rooster crowed. Just then the master turned and looked at Peter. Peter remembered what the master had said to him. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and cried and cried and cried. God, you made us in your image, and Christ is like a mirror to us. He reflects what we could be or should be. But we just look in the mirror and hate what we see. Worry lines make us worry more. Pot bellies stress us out so we eat more. The hippest styles don't make us better people. And in the end, we only spoil the holiness that you built into us. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Can ever pluck me from 
Fifth station, Jesus is judged, Luke 23, 20 to 25. At that, the crowd went wild. Kill him! Give us Barabbas. Barabbas had been thrown in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate still wanted to let Jesus go, and so spoke out again. But they kept shouting back, Crucify! Crucify him! He tried a third time. But for what crime? I have found nothing in him deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. But they kept at it, a shouting mob, demanding that he be crucified. And finally, they shouted, they shouted him down. Pilate caved in and gave them what they wanted. He released the man, thrown in prison for rioting and murder, and gave them Jesus to do whatever they wanted. God with every oil spill that fouls the water, with every factory smokestack that spews out filth, with every piece of trash carelessly dumped along the highway, it is as if we flog creation and Jesus, through whom all things were formed. With every foul word we spill out, with every vile thought that spews forth unchecked, with every bit of gossip carelessly dumped onto friends, it is as if we judge Jesus, the living word, and find him not worth talking about. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Sixth station, Jesus is flogged, John 19, 1 to 3. So Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers, having braided a crown from thorns, set it on his head, threw a purple robe over him, and approached him with, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they greeted him with slaps in the face. God of mercy, we are thankful that in our society and times, words like flogged or tortured are associated with other places and other times. Yet even though we do not know the feeling of the whip on our backs or a crown of thorns upon our heads, what we do in the name of profit and the way we treat those less powerful than us isn't much different from the abuse the soldiers heaped on Jesus. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call Station 7.
Jesus carries his cross. John 19, 17. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. God, we realize that Jesus left the palace alone and abandoned. With the temple at his back, he walked towards Golgotha, burdened by the weight of the cross, suffering from the wounds of the whip and the thorns, distressed by the disciples' silence, he nevertheless walked freely to his death. When we fail to forgive others or to seek forgiveness, when we let the cares of the world overwhelm us by failing to trust you, when we choose our own path rather than following Jesus, we end up pushing him towards the cross. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Jesus is helped. Luke 23, verse 26. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. Lord of mercy, a man was forced to help Jesus dragged away from his normal routine and made to take part in an act of shame, humiliation, and self-destruction. Lord, we realize now that sometimes, rather than bear Jesus' cross willingly, we selfishly force it onto others, hoping that they will do what we refuse to do, thus shirking our responsibility and leaving Jesus to fend for himself. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. A huge crowd of people followed, along with women weeping and carrying on. At one point, Jesus turned to the women and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children. The time is coming when they'll say, Lucky the woman who never conceived. Lucky the wombs that never gave birth. 
Lucky the breasts that never gave milk. Then they'll start calling to the mountains. Fall down on us. Calling to the hills. Cover us up. If people do these things to a live green tree, can you imagine what they will do with dead wood? God of infinite wisdom, when a great blessing appeared as a great curse, the people slowly realized that Jesus was indeed Emmanuel, the Son of God and the fulfillment of all their hopes. But just as his followers began to get their priorities straight, the ways of the world overwhelmed them as Jesus' enemies gained the upper hand. Lord, we have a lovely sanctuary and a fine sound system, but our televisions are nice too. We have lots of work to do in your kingdom, but our homes need our attention. We invest in the church, but only when it is convenient. God, we know what our priorities should be and what you want of us, but we're not ready to follow through right away. Forgive us, God, for we do not know what we are doing. Jesus is crucified. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 22 to 26. The soldiers brought Jesus to Golgotha, meaning Skull Hill. They offered him a mild painkiller, wine mixed with myrrh, but he wouldn't take it, and they nailed him to the cross. They divided up his clothes and threw dice to see who would get them. They nailed him up at nine o'clock in the morning. The charge against him, the king of the Jews, was printed on a poster. Along with him, they crucified two criminals, one to his right, the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. How often, God, do we see the bright glitter of a worthless trinket while missing the true treasures? How often do we look to the abundant dross that is left over rather than the small bit of gold that has been extracted? How often do we listen to our own raucous noises rather than listen to your subtle voice? Help us trust the truth we cannot always see, certain that the shadows cast by the cross are only temporary. 
in the midst of our confusion. Grant us eyes to see Christ's light, ears to hear Him speaking, minds to know Your truths, and hearts to know Your love. God help us, for You alone know what we need. Eleventh Station Jesus Shares His Reign Luke 23, verse 39-43 to 43. One of the criminals hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are, save yourself, save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You are getting the same as him. We deserve this, but not him. He did nothing to deserve this. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, don't worry, I will. Today, you will join me in paradise. In a true mystery of being human, with the same eyes each of us sees the same thing differently. Yet the truth of Christ is that he sees each of us with the same eyes of love and mercy. With Christ on the cross before us, knowing that he died for us, even though we were in part responsible for his death, knowing that we share something with both the criminal who spurned Jesus and the one who accepted him, grant us the grace to make the right choice and seek Jesus. God help us, for you alone know what we need. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus on the Cross, John 19, verses 25 to 27. While soldiers were looking after themselves, Jesus' mother, his aunt, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene stood at the foot of the cross. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her. He said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then to the disciple, here is your mother. From that moment, the disciple accepted her as his own mother. God of infinite wisdom, again you confuse and astound us. Even though he hung on the cross in excruciating pain, even though he knew he was dying, even though he was well aware of who had placed him there, Jesus looked not to his own needs, but to those of another. God help us, for you alone know what we need. Jesus dies. Matthew 27, verses 45 to 50. From noon to three, the whole earth was dark. Around mid-afternoon, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some bystanders who heard him said, He's calling for Elijah. One of them ran and got a sponge soaked in sour wine and lifted it on a stick so he could drink. The others joked, Don't be in such a hurry. Let's see if Elijah comes and saves him. But Jesus, again crying loudly, breathed his last. Gracious God, so often we read of hell as being a pit, a place of fire and brimstone, a devil full dwelling of great misery and discomfort. Yet there is no greater hell 
than to be separated from you and knowing it. Then remembering your touch and not being able to feel it again, from knowing your love and to no longer be able to enjoy it. Station 14. Jesus is buried. Matthew 27, 57 to 61. Late in the afternoon, a wealthy man from Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, arrived. His name was Joseph. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate granted his request. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linens put it in his own tomb, a new tomb only recently cut into the rock, and rolled a large stone across the entrance. Then he went off, but Mary Magdalene and the other Mary stayed, sitting in plain view of the tomb. God, what was it like when there was nothing left? How did you feel when Jesus lay dead and buried? What went through the people's minds when their Messiah's failure seemed apparent? How did the Sadducees and the Pharisees feel when it appeared that victory was theirs? God, we feel complicit in the actions that led to Jesus' murder because we are sinful. We have distorted your image we have squandered your wealth. We have wreaked havoc on the environment. We have ignored the pleas of the needy. We have walked away from Jesus. Forgive us, for we do not know what we do. Forgive us, for we cannot help ourselves. Forgive us, because it is the only thing that can save us from ourselves. Oh, 
Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, so low and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine that were